Okay, so this session we're going to talk, this is a continuation of session two, and we're going to talk about uh, training for how to give the different standardized tests. So I just threw up the schedule for the day, okay? okay? And the first one we'll work on is the uh, wide range achievement test four, the RAT four, and then uh, rapid automatized naming, and then test of silent word reading fluency, and then the test of written language, okay? All right. So we can just get rid of this and go right into the RAT4, how to do the RAT4. All right. What you see in f on the screen here is the spelling subtest page that the kids are going to do. Remember that this is where the, the pieces of the RAT4 we're going to do are spelling, and reading, okay? And here's how this RAT4 happens because, I, as I said before, it starts very easy words and it goes all the way up past college. In fact, the norms go to 70 years old, okay? What you need to establish, though, is that uh, the basal, we're always going to talk about basals and ceilings. Basals are the floor. If kids don't get, and the basal here is five, if kids don't get the first five correct, you're going to have to go down to ask them uh, the letters, the names of the letters. I'm sorry. You're going to ask them to write their name and write those letters, A, C, F, O, W. That's on another page of the protocol. It's on okay. the other side of the protocol. If we take a look at it, maybe we could show it right here. See, this is the letters, the name and the letters. But okay. you really don't need to start here because in most cases you're going to be working with older kids. So where you want to start is on this page. Okay. And if you get the first five words correct, you just keep going, keep going. until they miss ten in a row wrong. Okay. If you don't get the first five correct, you go back and do this and part do. first. Write your name on this page, then uh, those letter names. And then you're okay. done. And no, you you still need to go until you miss ten in a row. Oh, okay. Okay, so that is the next part of it. So the spelling subtest is when you're going to score it, you see the letter writing raw score could be fifteen. They'll get fifteen automatically if they got the first five correct. Yeah. So you just put automatically in there. The raw score for the spelling, you can see there's forty two possible, mm -hmm. and you just write how many of them are correct. So then you add 15 plus, say it's 30, that would be 45. Okay, that's how you get your raw score here. Let's just talk a little bit about how you give the test. You, ha you will have that in your folder. Uh, what, what you say is, I'm going to give you some words. I'm going to say the word, I'll say it in a sentence, and then I'll say a word again, and then I want you to write it on this line, number one, for example. Okay? I always tell them to... We're going to get to some words that you don't know how to spell because this uh, test goes past college. But I just when you get to words you don't know how to spell, spell them the way you think they should be spelled. Okay, so mm -hmm. they don't get discouraged. So you do number one on. It is on the table on, and they write it. Okay, number two and the boys and girls played together and. So that's how you give it. And again, as I said before, you watch for when they miss 10 in a row. Incorrect. Okay? Okay. That's how you give spelling. Any questions? So if they would get, let's say, up to 9, mm -hmm. correct, they get number 10 wrong, mm -hmm. and then they get 11 correct, mm -hmm. so you have to start over again for the, for the 10, in, 10 a in a row wrong. In fact, I'm glad you asked that because once in a while... You will get kids who get ten, nine in a row wrong, mm -hmm. and they'll get the tenth one right. <laughs> in yeah. that case, you still have to keep going. You keep and going. you're going to find out later in this course that this is a wonderful corpus of misspellings to take a look at what are they missing in terms of phonological, phonemic awareness, and spelling patterns. It's okay. great to have that many misspellings. Mm -hmm. The main thing is to keep the kids going with, it's fine, you don't have to know all these, just spell them the way you think they should be spelled. Okay. okay? So ten in a row. Ten in a row. Yep. Wrong. Okay. okay. 
And in case you need some pronunciation, you notice that later it gives you pronunciations, for example, for pusillanimous. Yes, they do. I would need that. Charlatan, most people would have that one. But there are, you know, some here that you may need the pronunciation for. Okay, so that's spelling. Pretty easy to give. Remember that when you're scoring them, you're going to score for the standard score and the percentile. We're not going to worry about the grade equivalency. But that we'll do in another session. This is just to teach you how to give the test, how to score it, and you will have time with your instructor to bring all of your protocols and we'll go through how to score, how to count it up, and how to find the norms. Okay? You don't need to do that with the testing. So let's go on to the reading part. And by the way, we're looking at the blue form. It could be green. Remember, alternate forms. Yes. So there will be different words. If people have the green one in front of them, the words would be different for both spelling and for reading. But they're equivalent. Okay. They've given them to the same kids, both forms, and found out that there's a high correlation with the score. Kids who score low on one score low on the other. Kids who score high on one score high on the other. That's where you get a high correlation. Okay? This one's quite easy to do. You say, there's some words here, and I just want you to say the words. The same basal. They need to have the first five correct in order to establish a basal. With this one, I would have them get the ceiling first. And then if you need to, go back and say, oh, I forgot to give you this. Oh. All right? So let's talk about getting the ceiling. So let's say they don't get the first five. It says cat in book three. Let them keep going right now. You know you're going to have to go back, but let them keep going. And you just score on your sheet that you keep track of each of the errors that the child makes. Okay? And I have a copy of this. You will have this that the student reads. Yeah. This is what you read for the spelling. Spelling. Yeah, spelling. And then you'll have this that you give to the student. And your protocol will, another protocol that goes with it, will have the reading words on it so you can mark them correct or wrong. And they have the pronunciations on there as well? Or is it? No, I don't remember. I think so. Okay. I think they do. I think so. Okay. So, again, the ceiling is ten in a row incorrect. So it's exactly the same as the spelling. Basal is five. Ceiling is ten in a row incorrect. Okay. Okay? Now, here's another thing that I always do with that. When kids get to one, let's say they're on lame. If I hear them going lame, lame. If I hear them sound it out, I put a little box around it so that I know, yeah, they got it. He's correct. But he had to sound it out. It's just extra information. Okay. Sometimes if they'd say lamb instead of lame, if I've got enough, if I don't have enough time, I'll just slash before it's missed. If I have enough time, I'll actually write above it what he did say. Yeah, because it helps you to take a look at what kinds of errors they're making when they do miscall a word. Okay? Okay. One other thing about this is this is relatively untimed. I say relatively because if a child takes more than ten seconds to, for example, try to figure out straight, you just say, let's go to the next one. Okay. Okay? But you can give them up to ten seconds to do a word. Do you give that word to them? No. No? Okay. No, just say, let's go to the next one. Okay? Very often they'll just look at it for a while, and then they will go to the next one. But once in a while they'll sit there and just look at it, and after ten seconds just say, just point to the next one. Okay. So now let's say you got your ten in a row wrong at triumph. Probably would have been sooner than that if they missed somewhere in the first five. Then you can say, oh, I forgot to give you some. Would you say the names of these letters for me? And then the raw score there is simply how many of the names of the letters they say correctly. 
Okay. Okay. And that goes in that. That's how you score it. Yeah. Right. In most cases, again, if they've got the five correct, Mm -hmm. you're automatically going to give them 15. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to give them how many correct there when you add up. Okay. Okay. So that's basically how you give the rat reading and the rat spelling. There is a math portion to this test, which we don't give in this in this program. Okay. And as I said, it's a quick look at untimed word recognition. And you also kind of get a feeling for what do they do when they can't figure out a word. Do they try to decode it? Do they just give a substitution? Mm-hmm. Or do they just sit there and <laughs> you'll give them the word? Yes. So you kind of get an idea of that. And clearly on the spelling part, you also can see when they miss it, do, mm-hmm. they, do they spell it phonetically or are they off base? Yeah. Are they missing like syllables? Like hearing the sounds right. and things. Right. We will be analyzing those misspellings. It's a really rich source of analysis later on. So, but for right now, five in a row correct establishes the basal. Ten in a row wrong is the ceiling for both of these. Okay. Okay. And remember that in spelling, they might get eight or nine correct, this one, and you have to keep going again. Could happen in reading, too. Okay. If they miss nine, get the tenth one, you have to give them the next the next, ten. next ten. Right. So okay. any questions about how to give the rat? Nope. Okay. Good. Got We're it. done with that one. Okay. Yeah. You can put that one away and... Um, we'll go to, whoops, where did it disappear? Excuse me, I'm going to have to go find it, the next one. Um, what's next in a row, Ran Rats? Ran Rats. Okay. Now the rat fort that just came out. Like about a year ago, a little over a year ago perhaps. Okay. The fourth edition. Okay. So let's talk about first what you need to administer the RAN RAS. This is in your um, test pack, okay, but I also put it in this folder for you. You're going to need the RAN RAS stimulus cards, and these are stimulus cards. Okay. Okay. Rapid automatized naming means how fast can you name these five different things over and over and over and over. And this, this is a practice part of the test. This is the actual test. Okay. Okay. And it has to do with automatic calling up. It doesn't have to do with do you know the names of these things. Mm Because, in fact, you wouldn't give it to a student if they didn't know the names of these things, like if they're an English language learner. Or on the rapid automatized naming of colors. If they couldn't consistently name these colors, you wouldn't give it because... Mm -hmm. It's when you already know these names, these letters, these uh, numbers. Can you bring it up like this, or are you going to go, uh, 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 kind of, okay? Because the authors of this test say that it correlates with reading fluency. That's, okay. not, that's not been my experience, by the way. It okay. correlates with speaking fluency, not necessarily reading fluency, but that's a whole little study we're doing with, mm-hmm. with what you turn in. Anyway, there's uh, a test, and by the way, they're one-minute tests. Oh, okay. Well, actually, they, you you time how long they take. They usually don't take more than a minute to give, I should say. To there's do objects. this full. Mm-hmm. There's objects, which we just looked at. Mm-hmm. There's colors, numbers, letters, and then when you get to the rapid alternating stimulus, let's get the two one first. Oops. Out of order. Yeah, I did that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what you see here is that letters and numbers alternate. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so now you're mixing it up a little bit, and it's a little bit more difficult because you have to bounce back and forth from uh, numbers to letters. And then when you get to the three set, it alternates between letters, numbers, and colors. Okay. So what they have to be able to do is to switch between the three different stimuli and see how fast they can do it. Okay. And as I said, these, these, this is now a national norm. There was a time when I had to do it locally to see how kids were doing. In any case, 
on the cover of every stimulus card, there's a practice run. So let's take this one. You want to put that in front of uh, the examinee. Uh, you can uh, point to each and have the child name it. Okay. To make sure they're naming it. And you're going to say, when I open this up, there's going to be a lot of these. And I want to be able to have you read or, or say the names of them. And then when you open it up, actually you're going to have the directions for each one. See, this is the sample one where you okay. want to be sure that you point to each one and they say the name. Now is the student pointing or am I pointing? I, it's good for you to point. Book, chair, dog, hand, star. Okay. Chair. Dog and star. I wouldn't get your uh, high score if I didn't have all the while. Oh, by the way. But okay. In your test protocol, you mm -hmm. can see. Um, I'm going to show you a card like this one, and you're going to try to name what you see on the card as quickly as you can without mistakes. You will start here and go across the rows until you get to the end of the card. So you sweep across so they see that they have to do each row. Okay. Okay, and then you say, first let's do a little practice. Tell me the name of each picture and you point to them. You go back to the front and do that practice. Right. Okay. So you do show them the test and then you close it. Uh-huh. All right. So they know what they're going to be doing. If they say a, a wrong word, if, for example, if they say palm, you'd say hand. Okay. So you give them the correct one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the only time you correct. If they give an during in, the practice. Yeah. If you give an in, if they give an incorrect one during the actual test, you don't correct. You just make note of it. Okay. 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 Then you say, very good. Now let's do a little practice. Name them as quickly as you can. So they have another chance to practice. Great. Are you ready to try the first card? Remember, start here. Name all the pictures in a whole row. Um, as quickly as you can, and go to the bottom. Ready, set, go. Begin timing with a stopwatch after you say go. Okay. Okay. And stop the timer when the examiner, um, examinee, excuse me, says the last item. Okay. Now, what if it's over a minute? You still keep it. I, I should not have said a minute because it could be over a minute. Oh, you could be. Your, okay. You keep your stopwatch going until the until kid gets done. done. Okay. Yeah, and you record the amount of time. See, this has the name of this, the different items, and you notice you can put in the time. So let's say mm -hmm. it took uh, 70 seconds, 1 minute and 10 seconds. You okay. put in 70 seconds here. And let's say made five errors, two self-corrections. You actually don't even have to keep track of this. Okay. Because <laughs> it doesn't enter into the score. Oh. If you have a kid who makes a lot of errors and a lot of self-corrections, it might be interesting to go back later and for an analysis to do that, but all you need to do is how long did it take them to do. Oh. Okay? Okay. That's for objects. You can see that right in your protocol are exactly what you're to say for colors and for each of them. Okay. Okay? So the directions are written right in where you're going to be marking. Now, yes, now why... Why would you give this specific test to a student? Did you tell me that already? Uh, to actually to take a look at their ability to call up words quickly in, in oral language. Okay. The theory of this question is that it predicts reading fluency. I don't think it does, yeah. and I've been collecting a lot of protocols, and I will be asking our instructors this spring to send, have all of you send your protocols. You're, you're going to be sending, uh, making up a, a summary sheet of all the tests you give, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do a correlation between this test and reading fluency. Okay. But that's the theory that this, it, it this is, is a characteristic, it's a, fi a common characteristic of kids who have reading problems. But a word is, recall. A word recall, yeah. right. Right. And there are things we should be doing. If kids have a word, real word retrieval problem, we shouldn't be sort of demanding uh, on-the-spot answer in a classroom mm -hmm. or maybe even in conversation.
And one of the things, if I have a kid with a word retrieval problem, I, I tell the teacher, one of the ways you can get around that is to pass out two or three questions. So say um, Henry has a word retrieval problem. You can say, Henry, here's your question, and I'll come back to you in just okay, a little while. Okay, like on a little note card or yeah. something. And, well, no, you can do it verbally. And oh, then you okay. can say, Sally, this is your question. Uh, Karen, this is your question. Then you can come back and say, okay, Henry, we're ready. Okay. And you see, Henry's had time to think about it, to call up the words he needs. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's why we're going to do that. Well, how you're going to use this info will become clearer as we go through this. Okay. Right now, okay. if we can get you Just, so you're collecting yes, the data. Right? Yes, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm going don't, ahead of the... <laughs> don't apologize. Don't apologize. Because it's important to understand why you're doing it. But what it actually means is something that will come clear. Okay. And then here's what the examiner record form looks like, the front page. The, we, this is on the inside. Okay. This is on the front page. And you notice you have all your student info up there. But here's what it says. Objects, raw score. That's the number of seconds it took him to say oh. all of the objects. Okay. That's it. Notice it has a space there for age equivalent, grade equivalent. We're we not like even going to go there. Okay. Uh, your instructor is going to have the uh, manuals with the norms. All you need to do when you come into class is to bring in the raw scores on all these tests. Okay. Bring in the raw scores. You will have a scoring station with your instructor where you actually look at the manuals. Okay. So we're not going to do age equivalent. We're not going to do grade equivalent. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's interesting. The authors of this test give an explanation in their manual that says these should not be used. However, schools ask for them, basically, so we do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say it a little differently, but yeah, okay. yeah. you will be filling in uh, percentile rank and the standard score. Okay. Okay? And that's basically what it is for those subtests. All right? Any questions on how to give this? No. Okay. So the next one in order then I think is the test of silent word reading fluency. This one? Yeah. I'm going to take it down to a hundred so it shows a little bit better on the screen. Um, since this comes up first, you're going to see that you will be, and by the way, there's a Form A or a Form B. Mm -hmm. They're equivalent, so some classes will have Form A, some will be doing Form B. I don't know what your class will be doing. Uh, but you can see there's a raw score. That's what you will collect after you give the test. When you come to class, you'll find the percentile rank and the standard score. Okay. And we'll ignore the rest of that. Okay? Okay. Now, the idea of this test is that it does test when a, child, when a student is reading silently, how fluently can they read, how fast can they read, and how accurately can they read at the same time. Okay? All right. Now, for directions, um, you're going to be working off of this front page first for the directions. Okay? Oh, okay. So what you're going to say is, uh, if you're giving it to the whole class, you do it on the board. But since you're doing it with one, you can say, um, see how the word in stops here and yes uh, begins? Draw a line right between in and yes. And so you actually have your student draw that line there, okay? All right. Um, and then draw a line uh, between yes and go. So you demonstrate how they're drawing a line. Now that's with spaces. Yep. Okay? Now what you see down here is that there are words, um, but there's no spaces in between. So what you need to do is to draw a line between each word, to read and draw a line between the words. Okay? Um, if you make a mistake, if you, for example, if you write OFG and draw a line and then you go, oh no, don't take the time to erase it. Put a little line across it, like make it a little T, 
and go back and put your line where you want it to because you want to do this as fast as you can. Okay? Mm -hmm. So would you practice uh, drawing the lines between these to two rows of words is what you ask the student to do. Okay. Okay, so they know how to do the, that's mm -hmm. how they do the assessment. Okay? Now, if they don't um, understand that, I mean, if they're totally getting the lines in the wrong spot during the example, do you just have them erase it and then you go back to the first well, example? Well, you, you have to be sure they can read. If they can read the words, that's, mm -hmm. that's really not going to happen. Okay. Okay. So they, they should be able to... If they can't read the words, uh, uh, this is not a test to give, essentially. Okay. Which is one of the reasons why I like to give that wide range achievement test first. Because mm -hmm. if you find out you have a kid who can barely read, mm -hmm. they're only getting a few of those words, I wouldn't even give this one. Okay. It is, they are easy words. But on the other hand, if they're really, really low in reading, you know, this yeah. won't give you much info. Okay. So then what happens is you say you're going to have three minutes. Let me keep it here for a minute. You're going to have three minutes to find as many words as you can. And you show them this, but don't let them turn over their sheet. Okay. okay? When I say begin, you're going to start here, and you point to that upper left corner, and you're going to go across every row for as far as you can until I tell you to stop. Okay, um, if you don't see a word you know, keep going until you find a word that you do know. If you put a mark in the wrong place, remember to don't take the time to erase, just put a little line across the top of it and, and mark it where you want. Okay, and then you say, turn over your form, begin. And at the end of three minutes, stop. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the directions that you have are don't score the test of a student who's missed any of the practice, practice items. Okay. In other words, in, in, if you were in a class, you might have them do it, but you wouldn't score it. In this case, you wouldn't give it if they it's couldn't do the practice them. items, right? Right. Okay? Now, um, let's say they got down to... Um, Slim liar, is that? Yep. That these two rows are correct, and then they start making mistakes here. They went this far, all the way down to verdict, but liar was the last one where there were two rows in a row where they were all correct. All right? That's mm -hmm. basically your ceiling. So you ignore those to start with, okay? Okay. Um, if you want to go backwards then, you score one point for every single one correct from, uh, where did we say? From liar. liar? Yeah, backwards. One correct for each one backwards. And by the way, there's uh, um, scoring guides in the manuals that help you with that. Okay. Okay. So if they... So, liar was the last last row, these two, mm -hmm. that they got all correct. But up here, where the word Yelp is, let's say they got one word wrong. Wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm telling you a little bit wrong here. If okay. liar, if they had two rows correct here, mm -hmm. liar uh, and the pelt, if there's two rows correct, you count everything as correct, whether it was or not. So you, from liar up, whatever liar was, let's say that that's number 115. Yep. The raw score is 115. Okay. Because you just, that's, that's the basal. You just assume that anything easier than that is correct, even if it's wrong. Okay. okay. That's how this was developed. So they have so 115. Two, yep. Now let's say they went two more rows, but they only got three in this row correct mm -hmm. and two in this row correct. Then you would add five more to it. Okay. So there's their actual score would be 120. 120. Okay, so two rows in, in a row correct, everything from there backwards yes. is counted as correct. 
then go ahead and find any correct ones in the unfinished rows or in the rows where there are errors. Okay. Okay. So that's basically how you do that one. And I think I, yeah, here we see some examples here. Okay. Notice that in row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in row 5, the kid apparently had a line first between H and T and then decided, nope, that's wrong. So he put a little line across it and put a new line in so that it is now correct. Night by. Okay. He does it down here, too, where he says jug, nerve, and first he has his line right after V and before the E. And then he goes, nope, that's not right. So he just puts a little line there and puts a straight line. Now notice, he's got errors in these two, wound, glue, affect. He's got errors in these rows. So you can't count these rows as his basal. But up here, the row ending in effect, are there any errors? Yes, there is. Lick, oh no. Huh. What's that one? I have no idea what that word's supposed to be. Result, lick. 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 Huh, but what is this? Greasy? Oh, cry. No, it's not cry. No. Weird. Let's go to the one up above here. Yes. Let's ignore that and say there's errors there. there, there. Okay. That's wrong. All right. <laughs> Urge, buck, object, dull, creep, tea, fry, mop. Good. We know we've got one row that's absolutely correct. Let's Perfect. go to the next one up. Polar, green, giraffe, club, oil, scene. Yep. 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 We have two row, uh, rows in a row that are correct. So this is his basal. So let's say that's number um, 100. Okay. I'm thinking it might be because his raw score is 108. So he gets 108. You don't have to go up there and, and, and figure out all of the rest those. of them. All right. Because he got these two correct, he gets 108, 100, let's say. Yep. And then you start to look through these here, the higher ones, and count up his correct ones. And what you should come up with is eight more correct. Okay. According to this raw score. All right? Yep. Notice that for his age, because he's 12 years old, in seventh grade, his percentile rank is only six. And his standard score is 77. So it's a really, it's a very, very low fluency rate. Yep. In fact, I see a note here that this is an example of a kid with a learning disability. So... He should be able to read more than 108 words, words in, in three, three minutes. minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and identify. So if, let's say, okay, learning disability, if they they passed the example, they got it, they said, mm -hmm. yep, I get it, and then they only make it to, let's say, row three or four. Mm hmm but then they keep on working and they have all these errors. So this would be the basal, these two, right. same thing? Same thing. And then just add all of these in. Everyone that's correct. Okay. It doesn't happen very often. Usually once they get their basal, they'll only go another couple rows Okay. Uh, before they run out of time. But so what could. if they don't get two rows correct in a row? Oh, you would ask that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go back and read the manual again, okay. what you do when you don't establish a basal. <laughs> okay. I, you might be able to just add the correct ones. Just individually. Yeah, but I don't know that okay. without reading the manual again. <laughs> and that's, that's why we have the manual. That's right. I can find out for myself. <laughs> now, here's another kid who is in first grade. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, great equivalents. Let's forget that. He's at six years old. Six years old. So he's probably is a first grader. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he gets a raw score of 22. Uh, yep, see, he got his first two correct. His first two rows are okay. So he established that basal. And then he starts to make an error here, apparently. 
as far as I can tell. Mm-hmm. It's hard to read mm-hmm. the copy. And he only gets this far. Okay? Okay. Because he, yard live, that's an error too, because he should have had oh, a yeah. uh, slash in between it. But way is okay. Under is okay. Bird is there. Found. Egg. Lunch seems to be. And then these two he misses. Okay. Stay, girl, cake. Okay. So he gets these two counted correct, however many are there. Um, let's say there's 16, and then you can see his raw score is 22. Again, your scoring sheet will tell you how many there are at the end of each line, so you don't have to count every oh, single okay. one. But, so he got 22 in all correct, and when you look at the norms, he's at the 55th percentile, mm-hmm. which for a six, six-year-old, that's good, mm-hmm. and 102 standard score. So the mm-hmm. rating would be average, and he is... Mm-hmm. Uh, in mm-hmm. regular education, a regular reader, mm-hmm. basically. Normally developing reader. Okay? Yep. As far as how fast he can te- read at this time, if he's only six and a half, whoops, excuse me, he's, it's probably early in the year. Mm-hmm. And to be able to read 22 words silently and make the slashes for him is, is probably a good speed. Okay? Okay. So it's a combination of accuracy recognizing the words accurate, and especially recognizing them quickly. So it's a nice measure of reading fluency that you can give in a whole group. You don't have to give it individually, okay. although you will be giving it individually. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that is the test of silent word reading fluency. Um, you okay on that one? Yep. All right. So then the last one we have for today is... Um, the test of written language. Now, the test of written language, and it's the fourth edition, so you can tell it's been around about quite a while. It's got many subtests to it. The only one that I recommend using and that I've used on a regular basis is the story test, the story writing test, because it it shows you what kids can do when they're supposed to put a whole story together in 15 minutes, because that's the amount of time that they have to do that. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to take the colored papers, the colored pictures out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be working with, when you give the test, you're going to start out teaching them about the test with this colored form. Okay? It looks pretty bad, on, <laughs> just black and white on there, but I wanted people to see that that's what it'll be. Yep. And you'll check out these folders so that you do have the colored forms. So here are the complete directions, okay? Um, And by the way, I should say, when you're giving a standardized test, it's very important that you follow the standardized directions. I don't mean that you can't change the wording just slightly, but you shouldn't be, for example, giving them lots of alternative explanations Okay. kind of thing. This is what you should be saying, and if you... You uh, substitute one or two words. It's you know you uh, haven't invalidated the test, but it's this is the standardized directions. Okay, that's one of the reasons it's standardized. Every student gets the test in the same way. Okay. So you say in a few minutes I'm going to ask you to write a story, but before you write your story, I want to give you an idea of what a good story is. Um, I will read you an example of a good story that was written by another student. Look at the picture I'm holding. This picture is titled The Surprise Party. Okay. And you hold it up, and you can do this either individually or with a class. I've done it with a whole class, but you'll be doing it individually, of course. And then you read the story to them. Sarah and her brother Joe decided to throw a fabulous surprise party for their mother's birthday, etc. Mm-hmm. I won't read the whole story, but you read it exactly as it is. When you get done... This time everyone laughed, and then they all cleaned up the mess together. (laughs) And then you say, this story I just told you has a clear uh, beginning, a middle, and an ending. The story has a title. The people in the story have names and show emotions, and their actions are interesting. Now, I want you to write a story about another picture that I'm going to show you. Try to make your stories interesting as you can, 
And you're going to give them the response booklet, and I'll show you that response booklet in a minute. Okay. And a piece of line scratch paper, okay? And you can say, open your booklet to page two, mm -hmm. and this is the picture that you're going to write about. You lay it on the desk or you, on the table in front of the student, and it should correspond to picture on page two. I'll slide down and show you. See that? Okay. And there's a space for them to write their story. There's a couple of pages in the booklet to write their story. But before they do, what you're going to say is, I want you to write a story about this picture. Before you start, take time to plan your story. Make an outline on the scratch paper I've given you. This will help you to plan and write your story. You'll have five minutes to plan before you start reading your actual story. Begin your outline now. Okay. So you have to time them for five minutes. For some kids, that's excruciating. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to sit there for five minutes to and outline. try to yes. figure out what they want. Um, I actually have said, you know, if you want to draw a picture or just write some words, that's okay for an outline. Because okay. for some kids, outline might be real scary. Yeah, you overwhelming. Say, write down the words and things you're going to write about. Okay. So you can explain what outline is, I think. Okay? Yep. After five minutes, you say, you'll have 15 minutes to write your story. Use your imagination to make your story as interesting as you can. Use paragraphs, good spelling, and the right punctuation to make your story the best it can be. Remember to write neatly. And then you say, begin now. Right. Okay? Yeah, 15 minutes. Now, this says that when 12 minutes have elapsed, say you have three minutes to finish writing your story. And then you say, stop writing. Put your scratch paper inside your booklet. And okay. that's all. Now, what you're actually probably going to find is there will be kids who, after five minutes, say, oh, I can't do any more. Mm. Yeah. And you sure. can encourage them to write more. You can't give them clues like, um, let's do a good beginning or let's name your characters or what's you happening can't do that. in the story. No. You can just say, uh, can you think of something else to write? You can say, look at the picture again. Can you think of anything more to write? So you can encourage them. Okay. Most kids, when they get to the end of what they'll write, they're done. Okay. okay. So you. So they, but they still just keep it right in front of them for those whole 15 minutes. Well, if they're obviously not going to write anymore, I stop then. Okay. Okay. If they keep writing, then you time them for 15 minutes, and you give them that warning. It's three minutes, mm -hmm. so they can kind of wrap up their story. Okay. But I just want you to be prepared that many kids will only write for about five minutes, and even though you say, oh, can you write any more? You look at the picture and add some to your story. Mm -hmm. That may be it. So after a few more minutes of nothing happening, you could say, you know, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you for writing your story. All right, so you have questions about how to get this? No. Okay. Easy no. to give. Yes. What we're going to do now is practice scoring. I was going to say, do we score this? Yes, you score. Okay. <laughs> and in class, the instructors will have this for everybody, a, a supplemental practice scoring booklet. So we're going to walk through that with okay. you, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's actually, I think, three samples that I picked out to practice in class. You and I will just practice one. Do you see story three, Gabby, it says? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you want to keep story three out because you're going to need to refer to this story while you're doing this. Ah, I didn't make a copy of the form. You have the practice story scoring form right there? Yep. Okay, let me Can leave, the, see let, let me leave the story out here. No, I have one too. You do. Okay. And let's score it. The first thing you need to score, notice that on your scoring sheet it says con contextual conventions mm -hmm. and then story composition. So we'll go through contextual composition, con contextual conventions first. Okay. And you can just to take me. that pencil. Yes, right. absolutely. And right on here. So now the first criteria you need to look for is sentences begin with a capital letter. 
And if there are no mistakes, the kid gets a 2. If there's one to two mistakes, or it's all printed in capital letters, they get a 1. And if there are three or more mistakes, they get a 0. Okay, so is this just sentences, or yeah. are these names as well? Just sentences. Just but sentences. The sentences begin with capitals. All right. So if you look at it was Sunday, that's correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next one's got a capital. Joe, yeah. He. Capital, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, slowly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. He. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Just. He. As. Perfect. Okay. So two. Yep, it gets a two, and that's exactly what I've got the answer crib sheet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can look. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Now the next criterion says paragraphs. Clearly indicates paragraphs with indentations or spaces between the paragraphs. Okay. So we're looking for. So this is obviously a paragraph. No, you know, yeah. This isn't indented. Yeah, but it's still. It's still a paragraph. Yeah, because you see it, that there is an indentation for when the next one starts. Okay. So how many paragraphs are there? So there are one, two, and then three. Okay. The, the start of a third. So there's three paragraphs, and you see the criterion is if there's three to four paragraphs, the kid gets a two. A two. If there would be five or more, get a three. Okay. Right? So yep. he gets a two. Two. She probably. Gabby is probably a girl's name. Mm hmm Okay. Now number three criterion is uses quotation marks. And that is must have both opening and closing quotation marks. For example, you saw them first. Okay. A zero is a no and a one is a yes. Does he use quotation marks and does he, he have both beginning and ending? He does. Use okay. In there. There, so, there. So he gets a one. There. She. All right. So what if he would, ha she would have him at the beginning and not at the end? Then it would still be a zero. It would be a zero. They have to have both. They have to have both. Okay. If it's inconsistent, if sometimes it's correct and sometimes it's not, you can still give a one. Okay. Because they showed they could do it. They, they could, could do it at one. Just at one, one time. All right. 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 Okay, so the next one is, um, number four, is using commas to set off a direct quotation. So there you want to see if there's commas. Yep. Congratulations, comma. And Before slowly. the quotation, though. Oh, before. And let's begin, comma. Comma, mm -hmm. Mrs. Smith said. Let's see. Um, there's punctuation right here. Yep. Punctuation, punctuation. Yep. She, so she got it. She got a one so there because it's either a one or, or a zero. zero. Okay. Number five is correctly uses an apostrophe at least once. And so that's like the dog's ball or student's books. Let's see here. So you have to look for a possessive. There we go. Yeah, but this is apostrophe. Let me just see. We need it. So one. Mm -hmm. And then a question mark. Even if it's not used correctly, is there a question mark in here? Right there. Okay, so Got that's it. a one. Number seven is an exclamation point. Even if it's not used correctly, and I think we yeah, oh, it's right a, by me. It's got an exclamation <laughs> point and a question yep. mark. What? <laughs> All right. I love that. I didn't <laughs> notice that. She. Okay. Number eight is capitalizes proper names, including those in the story's title. So she got Gabby here, and then yeah, proper names. Yeah, but you, it, you have to now do zero, one, or two. No. Oh. And two is always okay. correctly. So is Sunday. Sunday would be proper. Um, now this, it, would that be capitalized? I think so, because it's a specific kind of car. Okay. All right. So Smith, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe. That's good. 
Okay, so I'm putting a 2. Correct. Okay. Number 9, you can see these are the conventions. These, this, mm -hmm. these are things like punctuation and kinds of things. Yeah. Number 9 is the uh, number of non-duplicated misspelled words. In other words, how many misspelled words are there, but if the same word happens more than once, so for example, swerved, if swerved showed, if that is um, misspelled, of course, if swerved okay. showed up again, you'd count swerved only once. Okay. So let's go through and find um, cautiously is misspelled, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's no... Cautiously has a T. That's right. Okay. Yep. Uh, push down on the accelerator. Isn't accelerator with an OR? Right here. Yep. Okay. That's two. Parallels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intersections. Okay. Congratulations okay. is misspelled. Yep. So that's three. That's a T. Mm-hmm. Okay. Passed. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a dog run into the middle. He swerved. That's four. Mm -hmm. Missed the dog only by inches and slammed into a fire hydrant. That's misspelled. And the hydrant is with an A. That's five. As the police pulled onto the scene, he tried to clown us off. Thank goodness. To kill me. What? Joe spluttered. Spluttered? Spluttered. That's six. <laughs> What is this word supposed to it be? It should be sputtered. Oh, sputtered. <laughs> I was like, she's making up her own words. <laughs> With this, this whole, what? And then sputtered. Okay. It's so a very six. expressive word, but it's misspelled. So okay. That makes six. So if you notice, she zero is six or more misspelled. Mm -hmm. So she gets a zero there because okay. of the misspellings. Now, does she use an asterisk, ellipse, hyphen, parentheses, or brackets. Okay, what's an ellipse? Oh, the... Ellipse is when you do the three dots. The dot, dot, dot. Okay. <laughs> I honestly never knew what that was called. Oh. Oh, my. Okay. That unusual. Um, I'm looking for brackets, parentheses. I don't see any of those. I don't either. I don't remember seeing them. Mm -mm. And, in fact, my crib sheet says that's a zero. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, I don't see any. And then there's a fragmentary uh, sentence. It's a sentence without both a subject and a verb. So is there a subject here that isn't totally finished? Okay, it's Sunday afternoon. Hmm. You know what? This one gives them a zero for having a fragmentary sentence. And you see where it is? It's right at the end. Yeah, because she, she didn't finish it, right? right? That's probably where she ran out of time. I probably would not have counted that, but uh, strictly scoring it, it is a zero. Okay. Fragmentary sentence. Okay. Okay. Um, now, a yeah. I think that was unfairly penalizing her, but in any case, there you can see there's some judgment to this. Some of it is mm -hmm. straight, you look for this, some of it is a judgment, and you'll find more of that as we go through the rest of the scoring. Okay. Now, are there run-on sentences? And a run-on sentence is if there's more than one and. He went down the street, and he uh, sped away, and he did this or that. Yeah, no, there weren't any no. of those. 
So he gets a one, she gets a one there for mm -hmm. no run, run on the land when sentences. Mm -hmm. Compound sentences. Did he have any, did she have any compound sentences? She didn't. No, she didn't. Mm -mm. Compound sentences with, would be with and, where he did this and, then he did that. He did this, but he wanted to do that. Those would be compound sentences. Hey, actually, he's got some nice. She's got some nice complex sentences in here, but not compound. Okay, using coordinating conjunctions other than and. Did she use but or not for yet so? When forming compound sentences, and she didn't have any compound sentences to oh, start okay. with, so that would be a zero. Okay. Now, introductory phrases are like, when I look back, or before I went somewhere, mm -hmm. usually they're going to have a comma for the rest of it. So now you want to see how many of those are in this. So like an opening... Yeah. Um... For example, just as Joe looked over at Mrs. Smith, that's one. Okay. See how that opens it? Yeah. It's a it's a, um, a dependent clause starting it out of the corner of his eye. With this as the police yes, pulled on the Yes, that's another scene. one. But now there's no comma. Right, but it's still it's, it's an still, opening. Okay. Okay. Would he open the door? Not really. No, because that's a complete phrase. He oh, opened okay. the door, sat down, and clutched. Okay. So just the two of them. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. So if he gets, if she get got one to two of them, she would get a score of one. One. Are we right? This one says the score is two, but I don't see it. Maybe if we s spent more time looking at it, <laughs> I might find one. Joe stepped into the crisp air. No, that's that's what he did. Just as Joe looked over, that's certainly one. As the police pulled onto the scene, that's certainly one. <laughs> I don't see it. But in any case, so let's count it as one, as one point, two, two of them. Oh, you know what? Slowly and cautiously. There's a third one. Slowly there. and cautiously, comma. Joe put the car in drive. Mm. That's an introductory phrase. I missed that one. So he has three, which gives him a score of two over there in the introductory okay. phrases. That's a tricky one. Yes, it was. So non noun verb disagreements. Was there any place was, where mm. the, for example, he, they was running, mm -hmm. <laughs> would be a non-verb disagreement? When reading it, I didn't notice mm -hmm. anything. So no, no. zero. Uh, no, I'm zero, sorry. So he so gets, two. He actually gets a two because a it's two. perfect. No okay. errors. Yep. <clears throat> so sentences in the paragraph. Okay. Notice that there are, there's a score for one paragraph. For two pair, two or more paragraphs. Okay, so he had, she had two or more paragraphs, two or more sentences in at least one, and two or more sentences in at least two. And she had, she had two or more sentences in at least two of her paragraphs, yeah. right? So yeah. she would get a score of three, three, right? Okay. Now you need to judge um, the sentence composition. Oh. Is there a lot of badly constructed sentences? That would be a zero. If they're mostly simple sentences with a few introductory phrases, it would be a one. Or if there's a variety of well-constructed uh, compound and complex sentences. Hmm. Well, she doesn't have the compound, mm -hmm. but I think it's mostly well-constructed. It is, but the, 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 but they the official give, they score was only one, Ugh. apparently, because she didn't have the compound and complex. And complex, okay. <laughs> we'll give her a one. I would have been inclined to give her a two. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Now that's the softies. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, she's got a lot of complex sentences in here, but she doesn't have compound. Yeah. All right. Um, now, the number of correctly spelled words having seven or more letters, and you can only count a word once. Okay. An apostrophe counts as a letter. So it depends on how many you find of seven or more letters. Oh, okay. Now, we won't take the time to do that, but let's, for example, afternoon, mm -hmm. A-F-T-E-R-N-O-O-N. Of course, that's more than seven, right? Yeah, yeah. I followed probably as successfully, certainly as parallel one. Yeah, parallel is. Intersections, Intersection. congratulations. You'd have to go through and count how many there were. Um, and her actual score was um, a three, meaning she had 15 or more correctly spelled. Really? Words of more than seven letters. Mm -hmm. So she gets a three in there. Okay. When you're scoring, you have to do this. I will short circuit today for that. Okay. okay. Now, number of words with three syllables or more that are incorrectly spelled. So again, you count them only once. So afternoon, that's one. Cautious, no, that's yeah, wrong. Yeah, it's not spelled mm -hmm. correctly. Okay. Successfully. Yep. Two. two. Parallel. Mm -hmm. Three. Intersections. Mm -hmm. Four. Imagine. Right? Good, yeah. Okay, and we can stop there because if you get five or more, you give her a two. A two. All right. Okay. And then okay. uses, this is a really weird one. Why they give credit for this, I'll never know, but uses A and an mm -hmm. appropriately. So if they, he, she uses neither of them, it's a zero. If he uses A or A uh correctly, she gets it a one. And if she uses an appropriately, she gets a two. I don't think she used an. She didn't, so mm -hmm. she only got a one on that. Okay. All right. Oh, and this is the only one. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add that up, her total raw score on that subtest is 26. 26. So you can just put that in the box. So you see how you score this subtest? Yep. Relatively straightforward. You count what you see. Okay. All right. Now, the next on story composition is going to require more judgment. And here's where it's really good to practice scoring you plus someone else and then figuring out whether you're scoring the same way. Okay. Because you uh, teach preschool, you might be a little more lenient <laughs> than someone who teaches high school. Yes. They would expect uh, it to be more than what you will see probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So in any case, that's something that we'll work on in class, okay? But right. first, the story beginning, would you say it's abrupt weak? Serviceable, somewhat interesting, or grabbing, exceptionally exciting? I want to say it's grabbing because he stepped, first of all, you have the day, and then it says that Joe stepped into crisp fall air. Okay. And I would say it's, a, it's an okay, but it, does, it doesn't grab me right away where I really want to know what's happening. What's going on? Yep. See, so there's, there's an example because this is, to you, is, is I mean, this is nice language, mm -hmm. but it isn't... Um, Super exciting. Right. So she gets so a one. We can do, we can do a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, does this refer to an event that occurs before or after the picture? before and after. 
it's definitely before, isn't it? Because it talks about how he got into the car and they're going down the street and then the accident that you see in the picture happens. So she gets a one on that one. Got a one. She either gets a zero for no or a one for yes. Okay. Now the story sequence. Is it a series of random? Is it a series of random disjointed statements? It doesn't have some sequence? Or do you think it moves coherently from the beginning to the end? It's got a nice sequence to what happened, basically. I feel it's number two. Moves smoothly. And you're right. Oh, yay. She tells a nice story. She does. It doesn't jump. You know what's going on. Okay. Okay. So that's a two. Now, the plot line, is it really uninteresting, dull, flat? Is it interesting, logical, acceptable? Or is it intriguing and well-crafted? I'll go for number one. Yeah, you're right. All right. Because it's interesting. Yeah. But it's not real grabbing. Mm-hmm. It works. It works, exactly. Characters show feelings or emotions. None at all. Some mild emotions, like being upset, smiling, laughing. Or a strong emotion, like anger, love, terror, ecstasy. I can't believe they gave that as an example. Yes. Ooh. Now, this says sweaty palms. So, it... There is emotion there, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and then Mrs. Smith cried, so there's more emotion, calm. Goodness, I think I'm going to, I would go number one. Yep, I would too. Okay. Isn't I super, super angry, angry, terrorized, terrorized mm -hmm. or whatever, or terrified, I should say. It's that was just... a word finding problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, the next one, story action or energy level, the pace of it, how well the story moves. Is it plotting, there's no pace? Is it interesting and sustained, or is it very exciting, compelling, exceptional, something really unusual? To keep you reading. Mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be number one. You're right. Interesting and sustained. Okay, mm -hmm. story ending, abrupt, weak, logical, definite ending, or clever, inventive. Zero. Yeah, because he didn't There's end. no ending. She didn't end it. Okay. I think she could have. Yeah. Apparently she ran out of time. Okay. But again, this is, she did get warned that there's three minutes finish up. That's right. Thing. Okay, writing style. Is it immature, dull, uninteresting? Is it serviceable, a matter of fact? Or is it artful, stylish, kind of exceptional? Number one. Okay, you know what? They gave her a two. Did they really? I'm now when I think exceptional, I'm I'm thinking of um, fabulous vocab words mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. more visual. Could be visual appeal, you know. Could be, but as a writing teacher, one of the things I see is okay. She uses some very descriptive, nice descriptive words like sweaty palms, and um, uses quite a few complex sentences and dialogue and uh, description okay. of what's going on, and I think that's why. And Joe spluttered, <laughs> spluttered, <laughs> but. You know, it isn't just serviceable words. Um, so they gave her a two on it. Okay. Okay. For that one. You'd be okay with a one. Nobody's. Mm -hmm. Not a hundred percent of everybody is going it's to agree same. all the time. But we're in the ballpark of either a one or a two, right? Yep. Okay. Um, Num the number nine is the story is immature. It, it merely describes the picture. It's straightforward, it's coherent, it's interesting, or it's engaging and unique grabbing. It is number one, mm -hmm. straightforward. Yep. Yep, it's interesting, straightforward, mm -hmm. but not It just follows the picture, exactly. Exceptionally grabbing, right. Yeah. 
Now, number 10 is story vocabulary. And you see down below, if you can read it, you might need a magnifying glass, is you get one point for each of the 14 words that are used there. And I can tell you, we don't have to count this up. We don't have to take the time to count it up. But she got a one because she had between four to seven of those words specific to this story in her story. So these are the words that they're looking for that they want in here without telling her that these are the words. So, for example, you see street or road. I think she said street somewhere, didn't she? Waiting at the curb. You see police car, hydrant, driver's ad or teacher, dog, sidewalk. See, those kinds of words are there. At least four to seven of them are in there. Okay. Okay. And then you need to make a judgment of the overall vocabulary of the story. Is it very sparse and immature? Is it serviceable? Is it competent? Or is it very rich, mature, and figurative? We'll go with one. And that's what they gave her, too. It's a one. So her total for that subtest is 13. Okay. So you see how these two give you the mechanics. If you're familiar with the six traits writing, which we will use with this also. We'll score with six traits. It's the mechanical end of writing. Being able to write, to use punctuation, making paragraphs, writing correct sentences, writing different kinds of sentences. And this has to do with the creativity of the story, the vocabulary, how well it's sequenced, that kind of thing. So it's kind of nice the way the two different ways that it's looked at. Definitely. And when you get your raw scores, then according to how old your student is, then they will be translated into a standard score that would either be average, above average, below, whatever. So you would do it this way and then bring it to class for further scoring. And again, if when you're doing this you really have questions about how to score some of these, you could bring that question to your instructor and talk about it. Although, again, if you're one point off of someone else, someone else would do it. If you and I were way off in our scoring, like with all of these, or quite a few of them, I would then want to do some more training. We do more training so we come to closer, you know, in a rate of reliability, that's called. Okay. Two different raters, do we rate it about the same? But you and I were the same on virtually all of these. Okay, so trust your judgment. Okay. All right? Sounds good. So do you have a question about how to do the test of written language? No. Well, actually, can this be done whole group? It could be. Okay. I have done it with a whole group. Let's see. Where's the... Do we have the picture? Oh, this is the supplemental scoring booklet. Yeah. You can hold up the colored picture so that the whole group can see it. You can have all of them take five minutes to plan. And then looking at their picture in their book, they go to writing the story for 15 minutes. Okay. Do that with the whole class. I did it with two of the San Miguel schools in Chicago. In fact, the advanced diagnosis and remediation class is going to be looking at that and scoring them and doing some analysis of writing. And our south side, San Miguel, which is primarily Latino kids, and in the west side, which is primarily African American kids. It's fun. Yeah, it will be fun this summer. Okay. Okay. So you're now ready with our standardized test for reading, spelling, and written language. Got that? Got it. Okay, good. That's it for today.